Hello. In this video, I want to give you a gentle introduction to using the Unix shell. And what you need in order to do all the examples that I show you in this video is, first of all, some Unix terminal. If you are a Windows user, on the website there will be some additional material available on how to install subsystem on Windows. Subsystem will allow you to install some Linux distribution, for example, Ubuntu. And using that, you will actually have some useful computer in front of you. For the Linux and Mac OS users, you are already using some Unix uh, operating system. And on the Unix operating systems, usually you already have some application or program installed called a terminal. Now, let me first tell you the difference between a terminal and a shell. Basically, you're comparing um, apples and oranges. A terminal is just an input-output device. So it somehow can process input, for example, from the keyboard, and it can display some output, for example, produced by a program. The shell is a program which usually runs within a terminal. So you start this terminal, and the terminal will then start within it uh, some shell. So what is this um, Unix shell? A Unix shell is some way to communicate with your operating system. You can type in some commands in this Unix shell, and this program will interpret these commands. It will process a token by token. This expression's token will be explained later, but basically you can say word by word, and then will do what you are commanding this program. So, for example, you can use it to start a program, for example, a text editor. Then you can use this program to create some file content, for example, a source file for a program. Then you can use uh, the shell to run a compiler to compile this uh, program, this C program, for example, into an executable. And then you can use the shell to run this executable. But what I mainly will show in this video is how to use the Unix shell to navigate through your file system. Of course, there will be then, on top of that, other videos about what I said before, creating files with a text editor, compiling it, and many more things. But before I start with the file system, let me briefly show you uh, that there is actually more than just one shell. One of the first, not the first, but one of the first, uh, one of the earliest shells that was commonly used under Unix was the so-called Born shell. This is not a typo. Born refers to the guy who implemented this shell, Stephen Born. So he basically gave birth to this uh, shell. Don't mix it up with uh, Jason Born. Then um, next um, big step in the improvement of shells was the C shell and uh, also then the corn shell. So these were basically shells that were implementing uh, the existing shell and added some additional features. And what I'm basically using still today is the so-called bash born again shell. So here we have this um, funny acronym and uh, funny acronyms are very common, uh, by the way, under Unix. Now, um, there are also improvements to this uh, shell. Actually, I'm not so convinced about these improvements. Uh, for example, uh, the set shell claims to be a born again shell improved. Now, yeah, I'm still not uh, using these improvements. I'm still sticking with the bash. But I think on macOS, uh, the set shell is nowadays the default. I had at least uh, to manually override the default to the bash. But you should be actually kind of uh, free to choose whatever shell you want. In our cases, even the original born shell should do the trick. Now let's go um, to the actual topic, to the file system. The first thing you have to know about the Unix file system is that you don't have something like a drive C, drive D or whatsoever. We have a clear hierarchy of things. That means we have a certain root directory and the directory can contain other directories or files. So you can have a directory that contains a directory that contains a directory. So these are then so-called subdirectories. What you also should know is that a directory is just a special kind of file. That means 
every directory is a file, but a file doesn't have to be a directory. What you also should know, and this will be important regarding to find what you created last week, is that you have some home folder, you have some home directory. And let me show you in an example how this looks like. At the top of the file hierarchy, you always have this root directory. And this is simply called slash. And every everything else, every file, every directory somehow belongs to this root directory. So think of it as the mother of everything else or the parent of everything else. So what I will show you here is an outline of the file hierarchy that you find on Theon. That's the server that we will use. But of course, things will be similar on your machine because you are now running some kind of a Unix uh, operating system, but things might be called uh, slightly different. On Theon, the root directory has at least uh, one uh, subdirectory home. So now you see the syntax is as follows. If I'm referring to the subdirectory home, uh, you have here the name of the subdirectory and the slash indicates that it's actually a di uh, directory and not just a regular file. And the subdirectory home in turn contains other subdirectories. Among them is, for example, the directory numeric. And this directory numeric contains another subdirectory, which is, uh, for example, lay. And this is my home directory. Now, if I want to refer to my home directory in one single string, uh, we will call this uh, the absolute path, then I would say my home directory is slash home slash numeric slash lay. And maybe I should also mention that sometimes we don't have to mention the last slash if we know from the context that I'm talking about the directory and not the file. So when I'm saying my home directory is, then I don't have to uh, explicitly state this last slash. And I'm pointing this out because you will see when I'm using this shell commands for printing uh, the name of my home directory, this last slash uh, will be skipped, it will not be uh, displayed, because from the context it will be clear that we are talking about a directory and we don't want to waste um, uh, characters. Two more things before I show you actually some Unix commands. In the file system you have some automatically available files in each and every directory. And these are not some regular files, uh, these are actually uh, links to a directory, but think of it as uh, just directories with a special name and a special meaning. One um, file that is available except for the root directory everywhere is called dot dot two dots, and it's a link to the parent directory. And another file which is in actually every uh, directory available is just a single dot. It refers to the current directory. Now the use of this dot dot might be kind of immediately um, clear. Assume I'm in my home directory and I want to refer to my parent uh, directory. Maybe I want to move in the file hierarchy upwards. Then I can change to the parent directory by changing into dot dot. Let me show you this on the previous slide. So if I'm in my home directory, home numerically, and I'm referring to dot, then I'm referring to the home directory itself. If I'm referring from within my home directory to the directory dot dot two dots, then I'm referring to its parent directory. That means the home numeric directory. If I'm in a home numeric directory, dot dot refers to its parent directory to home. And of course, that means that the root directory cannot have uh, this dot dot um, file within it, because the root directory doesn't have any other parents. What is not so clever, uh, as I see now, is that I'm using here three dots to indicate some arbitrary um, directory. Three dots don't have a special meaning under Unix, so it was a bad idea to use three dots. Don't mix it up. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, maybe I also should mention um, the usefulness of this dot referring to the 
directory itself. Let me tell you a story. In my first semester, I was uh, new to Unix, maybe like you, and uh, I wrote a program for getting used to a uh, new programming language, which was uh, modular two by one. So I wrote a test program called uh, test, yeah, executed it, and nothing happened. I typed in test on the command line uh, in the shell, uh, hit the return key, nothing happened. And this program was supposed to print out something. Then I changed the program, compiled again, typed in test, nothing happened. Now the problem is the shell has a built-in command called test. And if you type in test, it will always execute this built-in command test, which is not printing out anything. It's doing something, but it's uh, not printing something. And uh, for me, it was not obvious what it was doing. But the effect was uh, that it was not executing my program in the current directory. It was um, executing this, this test program. So what I had to do was the following. I had to type in dot slash test. That refers to the file test in the current directory. And then the shell was aware, okay, I'm not uh, referring to the built-in command. I was referring to the file, to this executable file test in the current directory. But this will uh, be a topic on its own. But I have to come back to the actual topic, using the Unix shell to navigate through the file system. I will show you four commands. But before I do that, let me explain you one last thing. Uh, the Unix commands are very short because you have to type them very often. But if you know what um, the shortcut stands for, for example, ls stands for list and it means uh, it will list the uh, files in the current directory, then it's easy to remember them. Or pwd, short for print working directory. It shows you what's the name of the directory where I am currently. So in short, where am I? Or cd for change directory. Or mkdir for make directory. So now I will show you how to use these commands and also uh, how to use these commands with certain options and parameters. And then you will see once you have a basic understanding of using the shell or at least these four commands, I just can provide you a table like that, extend it over the semester or provide you some links to uh, good tutorials on that. But you will see that you have a knowledge that you can easily extend to your own needs. This is my Unix terminal running on my local computer on my MacBook. Let's first of all increase the font size and let's also go to full screen so that we are not distracted by the graphical user interface. And now we can check out some of these commands. For example, first of all, this print working directory command. Now you see the home directory is called different from what I showed you on the slides because the slides were talking about things on Theon and on my local computer. I'm running macOS. Home directories are located under the subdirectory users. So this part here depends on your operating system, on your type of Unix, and the name of the home directory itself is always your login name. So also different from what you see here. Now let's check what kind of files are located within my home directory, ls. Here we go. Now you see here I have some visual feedback about the property of the files. If things are printed blue, it indicates that these are not regular files, but instead directories. What you also see or what you don't see are these links that I mentioned before called dot and dot dot. The thing is, on Unix, files that begin with a dot are considered to be hidden files. Usually you use such files for storing certain configurations for some uh, programs. If you want to see actually everything that is located in your home directory, you have to specify a certain option to ls called dash "-a", and "-a", stands for all. So I want to show, uh, I want to see all files, and here we go. Now here uh, you see something is printed in blue, and uh, other things are printed in uh, black. Black means regular file. For example, this file .vimrc will become more important in uh, upcoming videos. It's used for my favorite editor uh, that I'm using for programming called Vim. And Vimrc uh, stores 
certain configurations. RC stands for resources. You see here the dot and dot dot. These are the links to the current directory and the parent directory. Let's uh, also um, consider that sometimes you don't have this comfort of uh, having some visual feedback about the type of the files. If I'm specifying the option L for long, then I get more information and things are printed column-wise. And you see, for example, in this first column, we have here this uh, cryptic characters, uh, D, R, W, X. These are the permissions uh, for a certain file or directories. Recall directories are just special files. And D, for example, stands for directory. So that means even if you don't have this uh, comfort of uh, blue printed uh, characters, you can see from that, oh, uh, applications is not a regular file, it's a directory. You also see that there is a column with a certain date. This is the creation or modification uh, time. So this means when was this directory uh, created or modified the last time, and you see it was uh, created or modified in 2020. Other files, for example, or directories like the work directory here was uh, modified um, this year in April 12th. Let me also show you a new command for cleaning the content of the terminal, just uh, called clear. It just uh, erases the content of the current uh, terminal, so we are not distracted by the previous things that were printed out. You also can combine uh, options for LS, for example, if I want to print things in the long format and I also want to print uh, all files, then I just specify both options. And then, here you go, you see everything in the long format. Let's clear this here again. You also can use options more compact. If I want to specify the option L and A, I also can do it like that. Dash LA or dash AL, the order doesn't matter. We do just the same thing. And things like that are usually uh, working with commands different from LS. So, combining options. Uh, is one thing that I want to show you here. But now let's do something useful. So let me show you here the content again of my home directory. What I want to do is create a directory for everything that will be created during this semester for this lecture, Introduction to High Performance Computing. And for that I want to create a directory HPC0. Here we go. Now we see I have a new directory here. I'm still in the home directory slash users slash lane. If I want to change into HPC0, I use the change directory command. This is empty except for uh, the two links dot and dot dot. Now let's create some directories for um, different projects. I will call this projects usually session one, session two, and so on. So session one, now I have one uh, subdirectory. Now I want to create a second directory, so I could type in, for example, make directory session 2. But if you want to save typing, you also can check out the following. If you use the up key, then you can scroll back in the history. That means you can uh, go back to the commands or um, recall what kind of commands you typed in. For example, the last command was ls, the second last was make directory session 1. So basically, in this case, I want to do the second last command again, but instead of one, I just want to use two. So here we go. I can type it uh, like that, much uh, easier. Now, here I have uh, two directories, session one and session two. Let's say I want to change into session uh, one. Then I can type in cd for change directory, and then I could type in session one. But basically, you see, in this case, Every directory begins with session and then comes a unique number. If you do the following, if you, if you just type in S and then you hit the tab key, then you get a kind of code completion. Uh, the shell will expand S to uh, what is uh, determined to be possible. And now um, could come a one or a two. If you hit the tab key twice, you get a suggestion. What would be possible uh, to follow the session? So here I tip, uh, hit uh, the tab key twice, and then I get the suggestion. You now can change into directory session one or session two. And I'm, uh, I'm using one, 
choose this option. Here we go. You also see if you use the cd command, this last slash is optional. You can specify it uh, or not. Of course, now this here is empty. Here we check again uh, where are we currently in the file system. Now let's say I want to change from session 1 to session 2. Then I could do the following. I could first change to the parent directory. Now I'm in HPC 0. And then I could change into session 2. Again, I use the top key and specify 2. Now let's clear the terminal again. But sometimes um, you have to do this um, more quickly. Uh, for example, now I want to change back to session 1. Then I can do it uh, like that. I can specify the um, relative path to my destination. I want to go up one directory and then I want to go to session 1. Again, I was using the top key. I can use it twice because now I could uh, specify after going to the parent, uh, parent directory, uh, I want to then go to session 1, like that. And then I could do the same thing to go from session 1 to session 2. But there is even a quicker way, because this is uh, often required to go, um, to switch uh, from one directory uh, to the other and back. If you specify the option dash to cd, you change back to the last directory. So cd dash would now change to session 2. Yeah, here we go. What you also can do, and what is also frequently um, required, you often want to go back to your home directory, whatever your home directory is called. And that uh, happens if you just type in cd without any uh, arguments. And now we can check out print working directory. I'm back in my home directory. Let me also tell you a bit more about how the Unix shell is interpreting your input, what you type in. You know, if I type in cd space dash, then you change back to the last directory, which is the subdirectory session 2 of HPC 0. Let's go back uh, to the home directory. But assume you would not know how to type in this command. And I just tell you, hey, type in cd dash. Then you might type in the following cd immediately followed by dash. And this would not work. You would get an error message command not found. Um, of course, uh, you just could accept it, but it's actually interesting to see how the shell is dealing with your input. It will consider everything which is not separated from uh, each other with a white space as one word, as one token would be the right expression. So here in this first uh, example, the first token would be cd because that's not separated with white spaces, a token with two characters. Then you have some white space. You also could type in two white spaces, which is just a separator for the next token, and the next token would be dash. And in this case, these tokens will be passed as command cd with the argument dash. If you type in something like that, you got an error message because the shell assumes that cd dash is the name of the command, it's one token, and uh, command cd dash is not found because uh, such command does not exist. Why do I make a big deal out of that? First of all, because this is a principle that uh, will um, come up again, how characters are organized in tokens and how these tokens are passed. But also, let's go back to this uh, subdirectory. On Windows, I was told, you can type in cd immediately followed by dot dot. Now, from that, you should already know this might go wrong on Unix, because this means the shell will get one token. This token has the characters c, d, dot, dot. And that means it would execute a command called cd dot dot, which unfortunately is not found. Now, after this bit of a warm up for using the Unix shell, let me show you how we can, first of all, undo everything that we did, remove all these directories, and then redo everything. And then you see with some uh, bit of practice, the command line can be used very efficient. Let's first of all go to the parent directory. And here I, for example, want to delete the session 2 directory. Then I can use the command rm. 
which is supposed to delete regular files by default. So if I would specify just session two as an argument, you, by the way, saw that I was using again the tab key to speed up uh, things. Then I get an error message. Yeah, this is a directory. I don't want to remove it. For removing directories and also subdirectories of the directories, you can specify the option dash R, which stands for recursively. So remove recursively the directory session two. And because session two is empty, it just removes this directory itself. Now, if I want to remove everything within HPC zero and HPC zero itself, I first of all go back to my home directory and then I want to remove this folder HPC zero and everything that it contains. Now it just contains session one, but recursively here is actually uh, making sense this term. So everything I'm done and um, we can redo things. Let me clear the terminal first. So I first could create HPC zero. Now I want to create under HPC zero this subdirectory session one. And I can do this without first changing into HPC zero. I'm just specifying here a relative path session one under HPC zero. Then I use the up arrow key, change the one to two, and here we go. Now if remove recursively HPC zero, I can do everything again. In my opinion, it's helpful to have a better understanding on what happens after you typed in something in the shell and then hit the return key. There is one component in the shell called the lexer, which is analyzing this sequence of single characters that you typed in and groups them into tokens. Think of it uh, like when you're reading some text in a book, you first of all just see a sequence of single characters but then you group these characters into single words. Then the next step would be that this sequence of words needs to satisfy a certain grammar. In the simplest case, the first token specifies some command, for example, ls or rm. Then, depending on this command, further tokens might be allowed for specifying options or file names, but they also need to follow certain rules uh, for example, that first certain options are optionally allowed and that you can also specify a file name or not. LS, for example, would allow the option dash L. And these rules for a command then are processed by something called a parser. Whether the parser is part of the shell or part of this program that you specify actually depends on the command. Certain commands are so-called built-in commands, which are commands um, that are part of the bash or the shell, uh, whatever shell you are using, or they are part of this external program that you call. And once this is uh, checked, that uh, you have a sentence that um, satisfies a certain grammar, the command gets executed. But if you get a message like illegal option, then the parser detected something was wrong uh, with what you typed in. So this message then comes from the parser. Now, let me give you a few examples uh, on how the lexer, first of all, is breaking characters into tokens. Let's say you type in rm foobar like that. Then you first of all have this sequence of single characters. Then the lexer would analyze the sequence and generates three tokens from that. It follows certain rules. Uh, how the grouping is done and the first token recognized would be this token with value rm, the second with the value foo and the third with the value bar. Then uh, the shell recognizes that this first token is an external command, so it passes uh, all these tokens uh, followed by rm to the program rm and the parser of the remove command would check whether this is legal or not, expected or not and our RM actually allows uh, this, and the result would be that the command gets executed and it would remove the files or delete the files foo and bar. So that's in brief 
also talking about the parser and the interpreter. If you type in this where uh, this foo bar is within double quotes, you first of all have this sequence of single characters and when the lexer is processing that uh, input, it uh, has a certain rule that something within double quotes is uh, belonging together. So in this case it would generate two tokens. The first token would have the value rm, the second would have the value foo space bar. So it would be uh, just one token uh, consisting of something that also contains white spaces. And then again, um, this grammar gets checked by the parser of the rm command, which is okay, and it then deletes the file foo space bar. If this file exists, if the file does not exist, you get an error message, but not from the lexer, not from the parser, you would get it from the interpreter uh, of the rm command. Also, if you type in this on the shell, where you have this backspace followed by a white space, the lexer recognizes this sequence of characters and one rule is that backspace followed by white space is not um, separating two tokens. Um, so in this case the lexer again would generate just two tokens like before. The first token would have the value rm and the second would have the value foo space bar. And then the result would be the same if this file exists, it gets deleted, otherwise you get an error message does not exist. So you see here I informally described some rules how the lexer generates tokens and this can be uh, described more formally. For example with something called regular expressions or with um, something called a finite state machine. We will come uh, back to that in more detail later but let's also talk about um, how you can look up what kind of grammar is allowed once you have realized um, the simple rules how um, the tokens are generated. You have to know what kind of options are allowed um, for a certain command. Uh, is there a specific order uh, on how you have to specify options and file names, things like that. And for that the easiest thing is to look up things on a man page. So with the unix command man you can look up the description for the unix command rm and then you see this man page. And before I tell you more about the content of this man page, let me show you how you can navigate through this man page. Using the arrow keys, for example, you can scroll up and down line by line. You also can use like in VI, the J for scrolling down line by line and K for scrolling up line by line. If you want to scroll forward and backward page by page, you can hit F for scrolling forward one page and B for scrolling back one page. You also can use the space key for scrolling forward and then with B you can go back. And if you want to learn more about what kind of commands are recognized by man, you can hit H for getting some help and then you get, get a description of all commands that are recognized. Now if you want to go back to the man page, I hit U for quitting the help. And if I want to go back to the command line, I can hit Q for quitting man. Now let's go back to the man page and let's look what you actually can see here. At the top, you see a short description of the grammar that is um, expected by the command. And below you get a description about uh, what is the command supposed to do and uh, what is the meaning, the semantic uh, of each and every option that is recognized. Now about reading this description of the grammar, you have to know that if you see something within brackets, it's optional. That means you don't have to specify it. And if you see a vertical bar like here, uh, you can read it as an OR. That means if you type in RM and then hit return, you would violate this grammar because at least two tokens are expected. Now. About the options, uh, for example here you see a group of options that you can combine. For example you could type in dash uh, d, uppercase i and also an x. And this would be uh, allowed by the grammar. Below you would uh, see what uh, the meaning of that would be. 
uh, about this group here in, uh, in the front where you have this explicit uh, vertical bar, this pipeline symbol. The reason why this is pointed out uh, that uh, you should specify dash F or dash I and possibly that uh, it would not make sense to specify both, but it would be allowed because this OR is not an exclusive OR. This is also explained in the bottom. And like that, you get uh, descriptions for pretty much every Unix command. And this includes the Unix command man itself. So you can uh, look up the description of man by man man. Now, let's sum up a few things that you learned uh, in this demo. First of all, this structure, this uh, syntax of shell commands. You have a sequence of tokens, and in a simple case, you just have one token. That means one word, that means one sequence of characters that is not separated uh, with white spaces. And if you have uh, additional parameters, then you have in between uh, at least one white space, and you can have more than one parameter, two or even more. So, for example, uh, you can have the command ls, you can have ls with some option dash a, which is just uh, one additional token dash a, or if you change the directory, the second token would be the directory to which you want to change, or if you want to change to the parent directory, you, for example, can specify this link to the parent uh, directory. Not a big deal so far, but assume that you would create a directory that has a name with a white space. For example, my project, and then some people would come up with the idea, let's call it my space uh, project. You can do this actually on the Unix shell, but then you have to use something, for example, like quotes. You can put the name of the directory in double quotes. These double quotes are just um, a way to uh, indicate what is one token, or you could escape uh, with a backslash the space. Let's also summarize uh, how we used, for example, commands with options, uh, in this case, the change directory uh, command, where uh, without an option, you always change back to the home directory. Very important because then you know, okay, I'm at my home safe position, and you know uh, where you are in the file hierarchy or CD dash if you want to go back to a previous directory if you want to switch between two directories. Also recall that using this link dot dot you can change to the parent directory even if this is not uh, shown as a, a file when you just type in ls. The last thing uh, here uh, is kind of important that um, you don't have to change directory by directory. You can change uh, to a parent directory and to its parent directory. So you can go up to parent directories by cd dot dot slash dot dot. And if you want to then go down, you could do this in one sweep with cd dot dot slash dot dot slash whatever uh, subfolder uh, you want to enter then. So make up some examples by yourself uh, so you get uh, some practice. But I think that's not a big deal. Also recall the different options for ls. So sometimes you really have to um, find certain configuration files. So recall that with dash a you see files like for example dot vimrc or uh, the directory dot ssh which will also be a uh, topic of another video. I also showed you the command rm for removing regular files. By default you just can remove regular files. Actually, we only have created special files uh, directories in this video. Um, creating regular files only makes sense if you know how to use the editor and in my opinion you should use Vim and I will make an extra video about how to use this editor, how to use this great uh, editor. So for now the only uh, possible way to use this command was in addition with uh, using this dash r option recursively removing directories and um, all its subdirectories. Now, once we create some regular files with some useful content, this will not work uh, all the time. If a directory is not empty, if you haven't removed uh, all the regular files with it, it, it will uh, give you an error message 
directory not empty. So this is a safety guard so that you don't uh, delete the directory with some important content. But if you're sure that you want to do that, you can specify uh, in addition to R the option F, and then it will remove all content of this directory, whether it's a regular file or a subdirectory. What you don't want to do is use the command as follows, but you should understand the problem. This would delete everything in your file system, every regular file and every directory. But you now might understand why some people find it funny to print this on a t-shirt. Now, the truth is, usually you run the Unix shell not with root permission, um, some kind of super user permission, if you're from Windows. So that uh, means usually you would just get an error message, permission denied, and uh, everything is okay. But if you want to have the real deal, if you, for example, have access to your worst enemy's computer, you can use the command sudo, S-U-D-O. Uh, it's short for substitute user and do for apply a certain command. And with that, you can run a command with root permissions and that actually would de delete all files. So after having explained a cool nerd t-shirt, I think I can finish this video.